Welcome back, folks, as we examine part two of Metropolis. We have been through and seen thus far the plot that has taken place regarding the city of Metropolis with the wealthy people who live above the surface in the Garden of Eden and the people who are terribly oppressed that live under the surface in a worker city uh, toiling away in dangerous factories. Uh, when we left off yesterday, the mayor's son was working on a machine and kind of a Moses type move, like when Moses went to go work in the brick pits with his people. Uh, the mayor's son went to investigate once again down into the factory and sees a, uh, a fellow who's about to collapse, who's worked himself nearly to death, and uh, takes over his role on the machine to understand what life is like down there. And we saw the religious significance of uh, that particular scene. So I wanted to show you this uh, scene here as we delve deeper into the film. Uh, there's the mayor who told his son the people were where they belong. Now look at this. Uh, Frankenstein is all over this, folks. I mean, it's like... This film, we, as we said, was so influential for so many other science fiction movies. Uh, and look at that. There's the robot that inspired so many others throughout film history. And what the mad scientist is telling him, is telling the mayor, is I can have this robot take the form of any living being. Stand up. So the robot's going to stand up and interact with the mayor. And essentially what the, the mad scientist is going to tell the mayor is, listen, if I have her connected to a living, breathing person, she can become identical to that living, breathing person, but still be a machine and obey orders completely. So we see the mayor absolutely astounded by um, this particular They want violence. They 
are eager to end this terrible life. So there's the mayor's son who again changed places with the worker so he could see what it was like. He sees Maria. All the crucifixes. So Maria is telling them that a mediator is coming and in hand. Oh, 
robot is going to speak of violence, of revolution, of killing the people that live on the surface, and all the things that are completely opposite from what the real Maria preaches. Are. This Maria is going to be blatantly very uh, wild and defaced, and we're going to see that she could not be more different. So there she is. Workers are turned loose. 
Like, uh, boss, we got a problem. There's a mob outside that wants to destroy the mother machine. Like, the heart machine that controls them all. And he's like, let them, let them in, let them destroy it. And he's like, what? Open the gates? Do what? Are you crazy? They'll ruin everything. They'll blow everything up. And he's like, just do it. Everything. The city will be destroyed. Your city, not the on the surface. Here they come.
the worker city before it completely floods. There you can see the workers dancing, thinking they brought an end to the tyranny of the surface. The power begins to go out. Start the blaze. 
scientist has recaptured, as you see here, the good Maria, and the people all watch in horror as the evil Maria, as she's burning, turns back into the robot. Show them the way to each other. 